Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to show you how to set up simulation of your robot in Gazebo. Gazebo is the default physics simulator which comes with ROS installation. Theoretically, if you customized physics properties of your robot properly, you can simulate the behavior of your robot in real life without risk of damaging hardware. Besides, you can test such properties of your robot as workspace and dexterous workspace, what potentially can help you reveal some limitations in your robot's mechanical design. But starting with today's tutorial, I'd like to go from ROS to ROS2, because ROS2 is the future. So let's dive in. Please don't forget to subscribe and press like if you like my videos. Also, I'd like to hear some feedback from you. Please leave your comments under the video. Your comments will greatly help me to develop my channel and create more interesting content on robotics thematics. But first I'd like to consider some reasons for migrating from ROS1 to ROS2. And the main reason is that current ROS1 release is last and final. It will go end of life in 2025. After that, ROS1 development will be discontinued and all resources will be directed to the development of ROS2. So no reasons to wait. Early or late you will need to migrate from ROS1 to ROS2, of course if you are serious about robotics development with ROS. As in ROS1, packages you create in ROS2 should be located in workspaces. So now I'm creating new workspace called RoboVS. And inside its src subdirectory new package called 6 arm Now I am going to create one more package, Kazibaros to control. And I am going to copy contents of this package on GitHub inside our newly created package. There is more stuff inside this repository which I don't need, including some demos. This Gazebo ROS2 control package is Gazebo plugin for interfacing Gazebo with ROS2 controllers. In ROS1 this plugin was part of Gazebo ROS packages, in ROS2 you will need to install it manually, I believe. Now we can build our newly created packages and source the overlay. Now let's look at how to write launch file in files in ROS2. As you can see in ROS2 you can write launch files in Python. Every launch file must, must contain generate launch description function, where you specify all the nodes and other launch files that you need to include in launch description. For example, here I've included gazebo launch file. Next we specify path to robot description file, which is then passed to robot state publisher node as parameter. And finally goes spawn entity node, which will spawn robots module in gazebo. Alright, let's launch our package to see if our robotic arm will appear in simulation. And we've got an error. In ROS2 all the packages are automatically installed in shear directory. For all the resources that come along with your package, you need to manually specify install directory in the CMake lists file. Like so. Now, as you can see, all the necessary subfolders are installed in the install slash share directory.
and we can't see anything. Why is that? As you can see, it is said that entity is successfully spawned. It turns out that Gazebo cannot find mesh files that are located not on Gazebo's current model path. To correct this, we have to modify package XML file a little bit. Alright, now we can see our robot. But since ROS controllers are not connected, no torque is currently applied to robot's joints. To set up ROS2 control, you will need to include ROS2 tags in your robot description file. Inside this tag you will need to specify robot joins and their state and command interfaces. Like this. And so with the rest of the joins. You can appoint certain join to mimic the commands of another joint. Finger 2 on the grip in my case will mimic the movement of finger 1, but in opposite direction. Also, we must include the name of the hardware interface plugin file. In some tutorials you may find that this whole hardware component is called just Gazebo system. But you'll get an error in such case that Gazebo system hardware is not found. That is because in Gazebo hardware plugin source file the name of the component is set as Gazebo sim system. That's why you should set this name correctly, or alternatively, you can modify this name in the source file. Next, we should specify Gazebo plugin file. And as a parameter for this plugin, we will pass the controller's configuration file. This is controller's configuration file. Here we specify update rate, which is equal to gazebo update rate. Next we specify two controllers, ARM controller and joint state broadcaster controller. Controller will actually activate all the joints and joint state broadcaster will publish on joint state topic. And then we define joints for the ARM controller to activate and appropriate command and state interfaces. Don't forget to include config folder inside install function in CMakeLists file. In the launch file I've included two execute process functions inside generate launch description function. These functions will execute commands to load our controllers. Also I've included register event handle functions inside launch description. So the joint state controller was loaded after spawn entity process and arm controller after joint state controller. Ability to write launch functions in Python gives much more flexibility and control over launch process. 
Alright, looks like everything is ready for testing. Excellent, controllers are loaded and accomplish, accomplish their job. But there's no much fun in watching it still robot. Let's make it move with Move It Ross Motion Planning Framework. There's Move It version for Ross 2 Move It 2, which you can easily install. For ROS2 Humble distribu distribution, you just have to insert the following command. But the problem is that in Movit 2 there is no setup assistant yet. In ROS1 we can launch setup assistant launch file and it will bring up Movit setup assistant, which we can use to generate all necessary configuration files. The good news is that if you already have these configuration files, you can use them in ROS2 as well. Otherwise, just, just install ROS1 in parallel with ROS2 and generate all the necessary files with Setup Assistant. I won't explain all the procedure in detail, there's nice tutorial on Movit Docs site. At the end of the day, you will have a bunch of file, files that you can just copy and paste. But before we need to create a new package for these files. And this package should have exactly the following name, main package name with movie config appended. And I'll explain why a little bit later. Alright, now I'm inside our newly created package. As you can see, I've already copied all the necessary files to config, config subfolder. Here you can see several so-called robot semantic description files. And also a bunch of configuration files. All these files were generated by Movit and are needed for its correct operation. And inside launch file we have Movit Config's builder module. This module takes name of the package, appends Movit config to it and tries to find package with such a name inside your workspace. And having found this package, it then looks for all configuration files inside config subfolder. Also, we will need to specify path to robot description and Movit controllers configuration file. All these paths should be specified relative to Movit config main package. After running Setup Assistant, you will have Setup Assistant file. This file is used by Config Builder module to find robot semantic description files. So take this file and place it at the root of your Movit Config package install directory. This is not Gazi, but this is service service. You can play around interactively with Movit and check if everything is loaded correctly. Now let's load Motion Planning Visualization plugin. Alright, looks like Movit is properly configured and loaded, but there are no interactive markers. And honestly, I don't know why. But still we can set target pose by using these sliders. As you can see, move it correctly detects self-collisions. Let's use this as a target pose. And we've got an error. If you will encounter a similar error, go to the folder where your ROS2 distribution is installed. There you will find package named Movit Resources Panda Movit Config. And in the config subfolder you will find OMPL planning YAML file. There's also such file generated by Movit Setup Assistant. But if you compare both of these files you will see that they are different. 
So let's replace our file with the one found in Panda Movie Config folder. And let's start our movie demo launch file again. This time everything works perfectly, trajectory is executed. Alright, but this is, was not a real robot, this is just visualization. As you can see we used fake components as hardware plugin. So let's replace fake robot with the real one, or with simulated to be specific. Also in the movie configs builder we should include path to kinematic solver configuration file. Now let's ask Move it to plan and execute trajectory that will bring robot to this pose. And an error again. This time Move it is complaining that it could not receive full robot state within one second. And the solution is to update our Movit config dictionary with the following parameter. After this simulation will work. And of course we can use Move Group API to program our robot to make some cool stuff. For example here we've created instance of Move Group interface to interact with Move Group. Next we define target pose for the end effector link and pass it to Move Group. Then we ask Move Group to create a plan. And if plan is successful execute it. Alright that's it for today. In this video I've, I tried to give you solutions to the problems I've encountered with when trying to set up simulation of my robot in Gazebo in ROS2. And to most of these problems I couldn't find solution in the internet. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and press like if you like the video. Also leave your comments and questions under the video. And see you next time.